Good morning on April 22nd, 2014. I uh, wanted to do a quick story about the ferry that uh, capsized, turned upside down. If you have been anywhere living on the planet, I'm sure you have heard about this story. This was a ferry that was on a field trip with a group of over 300 high school students and uh, some chaperones. Um, the captain has been arrested and I think nine shipmates have been arrested and I'm not sure what they're being charged with right now. Some people say, well, you know, it's human instinct that the captain is only human and, you know, the, the shipmates are only human, the, the ship is capsizing and sinking. It's only natural reaction that they would get off the ship. There's a reason why you're a captain and you are supposed to stay on that ship until all else fails and you can do nothing else. The uh, <clears throat> lifeboats that they had were not activated. So the mates didn't even try to put the life rafts. Not lifeboats. They explained the difference on the news last night between lifeboats and life rafts. Rafts. These were life rafts. Um, the crew members say they just they couldn't get to them. Um, they're supposed to be trained on how to get to them in any circumstance. The captain wasn't even at the helm. Somebody else was at the helm when the ship started to overturn. And he got off before it ever sank all the way. So, you know, who was minding the store? That would be, that's why he gets paid to be the captain, because it's his responsibility to see to it that these people are safe and if there's been a lot of you know things in the past where the captain goes down with the ship because it's still got passengers on it that would be like um, I work at a nursing home and that would be like if a fire broke out uh, the administrator and the people in charge would just simply run out of the building and save their own lives and, and leave the residents there to die yes they would be charged they would have to be charged with something because they are the ones that uh, the people entrust their parents to. Same way with the captain and the people on the ship. They entrusted their children. This is one thing that irritates me about that captain. Um, a lot of the kids that were saved jumped off of the ship, off of the ferry, into the water. Even though it was freezing water, they jumped. They were rescued. They were alive. The other ones are not alive. Why? Because the captain and the mates made the announcement when the ship had started to overturn, stay where you are. That's what they told them. They told them, stay where you are. If you move, it will make it worse. Stay where you are. So, all of these high school kids stayed where they were, and they ended up going to their deaths. I think there is, so far they've found, I think, 174 bodies, and so this still leaves hundreds missing, they say. They said it was, uh, it happened around 8.27 in the morning. They said at the time when it would be breakfast time on the ferry, so they figure most of the students would have been in the cafeteria on the ferry. Uh, but finding them is very difficult because the ferry is upside down and underwater and they said that when you dive that you can't see your hand in front of you. Literally you can't see it. You're just feeling your way around. But they have started bringing up body after body. A lot of the parents are still having wishful thinking that there are air pockets in there and that their loved ones have survived. But this has been a week in frigid water. No. But, you know, if I was one of those parents, I'd probably feel that way too. You got to have something to hang on to. Something very cruel that happened. Uh, somehow, texts that they said were being sent from the ferry was actually not being sent from the ferry. It was being sent by somebody playing a prank, and that was a cruel, cruel thing to do, to send a uh, text to your loved ones saying you're alive and all this stuff. That's cruel. They have to find who did it and they should be prosecuted to the fullest.
I don't care how old they were. I don't care if they were a teenager in high school and said, oh, I didn't know. Well, sit back in your jail cell and learn. Another thing that happened after this, uh, the vice principal of the school uh, was rescued. And two days after he was rescued, uh, he was found hanging. He, had, he took his own life. He hung himself. He said he left a note saying that he could no longer live with himself knowing that this field trip was his project. Those students were there because of him and that uh, he couldn't save them. And he said it just wasn't right for him to continue to live, so he took his own life leaving behind two daughters, a son, and a wife. Um, it's just sad. It's sad. I believe this is in uh, Korea where all this happened. And really, another really, really sad thing about that was one of the uh, teenagers' mothers, they did an interview with her, and she said her daughter did not want to go on that trip. Her daughter did not want to go. I think her daughter had gone the year before or something, and she didn't want to take that trip this year. But her mother told her it would be a good experience for her and encouraged her to go. And so her daughter did go, and her daughter is still among the missing. That's just so sad. You know, this poor woman is just grief-stricken more than the other parents, perhaps, because of the fact that she feels like she put her daughter in that situation. So, anyway, that's still going on. And, and if you've heard anything about uh, the ferry, they're not saying why, or I've not seen why it tipped over. It, they said it just started tipping at a 10 degree angle when the announcement was made to stay where you are and then just kept tipping. So, anyway, that's all I have for today. And until next time, bye-bye.